very good morning to all our viewers. I'm Chethi Narula and welcome to the morning edition of Vion Wallet only on World is One News. Good time now for us to take a look at the top headlines that are making news at this hour from around the globe. Italy's new government embarks on toxic road to rescue banks, decides to seek parliamentary approval to borrow 20 billion euros. Facebook gets EU antitrust complaint over WhatsApp takeover bid, risks a multi-million euro fine. The fate of Nasli Vadia to be decided at the extraordinary general meeting. The proposal to remove him will be voted by shareholders. The Telecom Regulatory Authority of India or the TRAI recommends free data for rural subscribers. On to the top story that we're tracking at this hour and of course that's from Italy. Now the Italian government has decided to seek parliamentary approval to borrow 20 billion euros to underwrite the stability of its wobbly banking sector starting with a likely bailout of number three lender as earlier as this week. Monte de Pashi recently judged the weakest of the European Union's major banks needs to dispose of a mountain of bad loans and raise 5 billion euros in capital by the end of this month or else face the risk of being worn down by European Central Bank. Italy's economy minister has also said that the money it was seeking could be used to guarantee adequate liquidity in the banking system. A government bailout could come as early as this week, but it could also prove to be politically explosive for the weak old administration of the new prime minister, given that investors are required to bear losses under EU bailout rules. So are you hoping for a new desktop Mac? You may finally be in luck if you are willing to do so. Uh, Apple has got some great desktops planned as CEO Tim Cook has told employees in an internal memo. With Apple's business ever more dependent on the iPhone, its commitment to its desktop products once its bread and butter is questionable. Upgrade cycles have slowed to a crawl as iMac hasn't had an upgrade for more than 430 days. The state of the Mac Pro is even more dire. Its latest release was in December 2013, more than 1,000 days ago. However, there are concerns inside Apple about the company's commitment to desktop computers as well. The year 2016 has been one of the worst years for Apple as sales of its flagship product have fallen sharply. And Facebook risks a multi-million euro fine for allegedly misleading European Union merger watchdogs when it won approval to buy the WhatsApp messaging service in the year 2014. The EU's antitrust authority said in a statement it suspects Facebook supplied incorrect or misleading information really on linking data with WhatsApp when the regulators cleared the tie-up two years ago. However, officials have clarified approval for the $22 billion deal which is in under threat. Facebook is the latest uh, US technology giant in the EU sites this year after it ordered Apple to repay $13.5 billion in back taxes and stepped up three separate antitrust investigations into Google's behavior. And UK retail sales have grown at their fastest annual pace in more than a year this month, according to the Confederation of British Industry, which also warned that pressure on shoppers' budgets could increase over the coming year. The Confederation also showed monthly retail sales index climbed to 35 in December, the highest since September 2015 from 26 in November. 
clothing and hardware stores led the gain. However, inflation in UK that has been fueled by the pound's drop against all major global currencies really looks uh, set to squeeze consumers in the coming year. Consumer price growth at 1.2% last month could accelerate to 2.3% by the second quarter, which is H2 of 2017, which means that's H2 of FY18, really. And coming back to India, the big story that we've been tracking, which is the Tata Mystery Round. Now, the fate of Nasli Vadia, who is an independent director of Tata Steel, will be decided at the extraordinary general meeting today, as the proposal to remove him will be voted by its shareholders. Tata Steel had called an EGM to remove Cyrus Mystery and an independent director, Nasli Vadia, from their board. Mystery on Monday resigned from the boards of six listed Tata companies. Meanwhile, on Tuesday, investment firms controlled by Tata Sons, ousted chairman Cyrus Mystery's family, have moved the National Company Law Tribunal to protect their interests against mismanagement and operation of minority shareholders. The petition will be heard on 22nd December. Clause 241 of the company law allows minority shareholders to complain that the affairs of a company are not being managed properly. Such shareholders can also complain if an alteration in the board of directors will affect the management of the company. On Monday, after stepping down from the boards of the group's listed firms ahead of the shareholders' meeting called to oust him, Mystery had said that he would take the battle to a larger platform. Remember, Cyrus Mystery resigned from all the Tata-owned companies last Monday. Now, the demonetization drive has impacted the sale of luxury cars in India. As buyer sentiment has dampened, especially in the high-end luxury goods market, the decline in luxury car sales has been steep. We on team finds out how this will impact the big plans of luxury car makers for India. Take a look at this story. The year 2016 has been one of the worst for luxury car makers in India. More than three months of diesel car ban in Delhi and adjoining areas impacted car makers adversely during the year. And now at the year end, the demonetization drive has further dented luxury car retail sales. The whole country is affected, everybody is affected. And uh, what we've seen uh, basically for two weeks, the feeling is as if the country has come to a complete stop. I mean, everybody was lining up at the ATMs. And so obviously this had an impact in our November sales figures because people had other things to do, they're looking for new cars. Yes. Ironically, this year has seen one of the largest number of luxury cars being launched in India. Together, the top three luxury car makers, including BMW, Audi and Mercedes, have launched close to 30 new models this year. For us, 2016 has been a good year. Uh, the market environment was challenging, was difficult, a lot of unforeseen things happened. So it could have been even better than that. But still, um, we recap uh, the year in a very positive manner because we were able to grow our business quite well. The luxury market in India is expected to end the year at nearly the same level as last year. In 2015, sales were estimated at 34,000 units, and this year, the numbers may be the same or may go further down. Bureau report, Vion. And as a part of its push to support cashless economy, Telecom Regulatory Authority of India, or the TRAI, has recommended that a reasonable amount of free data should be provided to rural subscribers. The scheme could be funded from the Universal Service Obligation, or the USO Fund. Here are the details. Under the USO Fund, the government charges a CES called the Universal Access Levy from telecom licensees to fund setting up of telecom infrastructure in all remote areas. The TREI has recommended that the scheme for free data must be telecom operator agnostic and must not involve any arrangement between the telecom service provider and the content provider as well. Also, the scheme should not be designed to circumvent its regulation on free mobile internet access. TRAI in the month of February barred differential pricing on internet which ended services of platforms like Facebook's Free Basics and Airtel Zero as well. The regulator in May also released a consultation paper on free data services. 
Let's move over to news from Japan now. The Bank of Japan had a two-day monetary policy meet where the policy was kept steady, signaling a brighter view of the economy on Tuesday. The central bank issued a statement where they officially maintain that Japan's economy continues to recover moderately as a trend. The announcement was in line with street estimates. The Bank of Japan maintained 0.1% interest changes on a portion of excess reserves that financial institutions parked with the central bank. Even the 10-year government bond yield target of 0% was left unchanged. The Bank of Japan Governor Haruhiko Kuroda is slated to address the media to explain the policy decision which is made by the Bank of Japan. The central bank, which is the Bank of Japan, exuded optimism on the growth outlook as a slide in yen will sharply improve the, um, improve rather, the outlook for Japan in the year 2017 going forward. The bank said that rising demand, you've got large fiscal stimulus and the growth in exports as well will help Japan's economy to expand moderately. Well, as usual, we'll take a look at how the global markets are faring in trade at this point of time as we speak. But before that, a quick break right here on World is One News. Thank you for staying tuned to We on Wallet. We'll be back after a very short break. Thank you so much for staying with us right here on We On Wallet. And it's time now for us to do a check on the global markets. Let's start, start off really with India. The Indian markets opened in the green this morning following global queues. The Sensex opened higher and the Nifty, of course, reclaimed the 8,100 mark. As far as the Sensex and the Nifty is concerned, let's take a quick check of how the Indian indices are faring in trade today. The Sensex is up 0.16% as we speak, trading at the 26,350.82 mark. And the Nifty is up 0.14%, trading at the 8,093 8 mark, really. As far as... Uh, the market movers are concerned. You've got Wellspun Corp, Kashal Trade, Datamatics Global and Bharat Financials as well, which are trading in the green as we speak. Commodities, uh, let's take a look at gold now. It's down almost half a percent in trade, holding 4 to 27,130 levels. And crude oil is up 0.64 percent in trade and trading at 3,641 levels. As far as the currencies are concerned, the rupee is down 0.14 percent to the dollar, trading at 67.94, that is 68 there about uh, to the US dollar and 84.08 to the uh, British pound as well. Uh, the North and South American markets finished higher today with shares in Brazil leading the region. The Bovespa is up 0.83% while US's S&P 500 was up 0.636% in trade yesterday. And as far as Mexico is concerned, the IPC was up 0.08%. The European markets finished higher with shares in France leading the region. The CAC was up 0.56% in trade yesterday while London's FTSE was up 0.38% in trade yesterday and Germany's DAX was up 0.33% as well. As far as the Asian markets are concerned, the Asian markets were trading higher today in trade as Japan and Hong Kong shares showed fair bit of gains coming in. The Nikkei was up 0.15% and the Hang Seng was up almost half a percent in trade. We're now joined by a market expert, Dhaval Pivyas, to dissect this in much detail. Good morning, Dhaval, and thank you so much for joining us right here on uh, we on wallet let's start off really by the european markets do you think they're showcasing favor of resilience to the geopolitical shocks in the manner in which europe is uh, was trading yesterday mm, hi good morning uh, see looking at the current market trend basically especially in ftsc as well as um, dex uh, both are basically in strong uptrend and they're showing strength day by day while uh, you know most of the markets which are in Asian region are not performing well enough. Uh, if you see on monthly charts, they are gaining quite a bit this month, and they are about to kind of break out um, basically on a monthly basis also. So overall, the idea is there is still um, a percentage of nearly eight to nine percent gain left in European markets. Uh, we may know the reasons later, but overall, looking at the technical charts. It seems the uptrend is likely to last from next um, for, for next one to two months.
So overall, the idea should be buying on each dip, even you can buy on the rallies. As far as the American markets concerned, I'm just taking a look at how they closed really last night in trade, and it's uh, interesting to note that the Dow Jones was up almost half a percent, a little shy of that 20,000 mark, which was expected on the Dow Jones to come in. Maybe today in trade or the next few trading se sessions, we will see the Dow hit the 20,000 mark. Really, I would love to know that from you. And of course, the S&P was up 0.36 percent, and Nasdaq up almost half a percent in trade as well. Your the American market. Markets are clearly seeing a fair bit of positive momentum setting in, but we'd like to know when will the Dow really hit the 20,000 psychological mark? Of course, it's very close to the 20,000 mark now. See, looking at the chart, uh, you must note that uh, from last several, in a sense, uh, six to seven quarters, uh, Dow Jones was not breaking above 19,000 comfortably and it was retreating back. Uh, now, what has happened is on quarterly charts, you have a breakout. So, so 20,000 mark will be hit in a day or two, but overall the idea is Dow is heading towards the levels of 21,500, 21,800, and um, ma majority of the you know uh, the post Trump rally basically is still likely to be in store. So overall the trend is likely to last for at least January end. And the idea is Nasdaq has been underperforming. And now it has been showing some strength from last couple of days. So overall, the idea is, uh, if you are looking to outperform Dow Jones in U.S. markets, then Nasdaq is the one index where you should be looking at, and uh, IT space is the one which we are liking the most in U.S. markets. So overall, the idea is, uh, Nasdaq can add nearly 12 to 14 percent from current levels. And as far as the dollar is concerned, it traded near its 14 year high uh, on hopes of uh, better U.S. growth really going forward. What would you attribute the rally that we're seeing on the greenback? What we are seeing is kind of basically uh, breakouts after breakouts in dollar and you always uh, try to follow the trend in market. So all the idea is dollar strength, which most of the players believe that uh, the upside is limited. We believe that somehow uh, dollar strength is likely to continue over next one to two quarters, uh, it is like a uh, dollar index is likely to hit about 110, 112 levels. Overall, the idea is mm, dollar strength will continue to hurt gold prices, uh, while emerging economies also will feel the hit just because uh, in case of India, uh, we will see a kind of uh, basically depreciation in INR. That is what we are expecting right now. So overall, we believe that depreciation in emerging economy will continue just because of the uh, quite a bit, you know, strong strength of the uptrend which which we are witnessing in U.S. dollar. So, uh, for U.S. dollar, still it's a buy call at current levels. Of course, the yen now it uh, was last down 0.65 percent against the greenback as well. Your sense of the yen and your sense of the Nikkei as well post the Bank of Japan policy came out yesterday. See, yen may somehow. Um, uh, you know, continue to underperform. But overall, the idea is, uh, if you look at the Japan markets, Nikki, uh, somehow we believe that uh, we are on the verge of a breakout. There also we are near to the levels of 20,000. But overall, we believe that the rally, otherwise the kind of strength which the economy is seeing in Japan, will somehow boost up the market, and the resistance around 20,200 will be broken in next month or so. Overall, the idea is for Nikkei, uh, for one quarter, one, one need to uh, remain long with a target of 22,000, 22,300 in Nikkei, just because the trend is quite good. We are just starting um, the uptrend again. And again, one uh, when, when should note that Nikkei is, has been taking a support from the long-term levels also. So overall, the idea is um, this is the one market where, despite the uh, growth concerns in the past, is likely to surprise the traders a lot. And as far as on a winding note, the Indian markets are concerned. Fair bit of shocks came in for the Indian market in the year 2016. I mean, you had the Brexit first, then you had the US presidential elections, then you had demonetization as well. How do you think the markets are likely to behave in 2017? Do you think they're going to be coming off the lows and the corrections that we've seen in the year 2016? And a fair bit of uh, uh, problems uh, and profit booking and selling pressures, what the market has seen this year. Your sense of how the year 2017 is likely to pan out, do you think we're going to see better days? 
what we are seeing is basically there is a likelihood of Nifty touching around 7,800, 7,700 uh, levels, 7, levels uh, in the coming months. But overall, the idea is that would be an ideal opportunity to enter into Indian markets. Overall, the idea is uh, we can see the levels of nearly 8,800, 9,450 levels in the year 2017, especially from the uh, start of basically second quarter. In fact, uh, the calendar year of the second quarter would be basically a kind of um, recovery mode. So overall, uh, we believe that um, in case Nifty, which has a very strong support in the zone of 7,900, 8,000, if that gets broken, 250, 300 points can be seen on downside, but that would be a a uh, very good opportunity right. for long the market. Right. Thank you so much, Dawal, for joining us on that quick market update. That's it now from the entire team of We On Wallet. We will see you again this evening at 5.30 p.m. I'm Chaiti Narula signing off. Stay tuned to World Is One News.